So, came up for a sunrise this morning and this happened. Said there was going to be fog, but I was expecting the fog to be a lot lower. I am on the Malvern Hills again, but the whole place is covered in clouds. Now this got me thinking, what do you do on days like this? Do you just scrap it off or do you go for a wander and see what else you can find? I'm going to go for a wander. Now, if you get a little bit of a cloud base, sometimes you can get some definition in the sky. So I've got the beacons firmly in the clouds in the background, but I've got a line of cloud here and then there's a lot of haze and mist giving quite a lot of depth over this side. The question is, can I capture that? So we're at 16 mil, gonna go deeper once I get my focus. Now this isn't gonna win any prizes, but it shows the layers this atmosphere is creating between those hills in the distance. Anyway, like I was saying, if you get a line in your frame, you can use that and put it on your thirds, put it a little bit higher, but then you can use that darker cloud at the top. And then when you're editing, bring out that darkness even more it can add to the moodiness of the shot. In coming out on days like this, where there's a lot of fog, there's a lot of atmosphere, where you're just in the clouds, you can get very different photographs. I have photographed this tree before in one of my other videos, so I thought it'd be interesting to look at the two side by side. You can see one had a really nice sunrise in the background, and then this one, it's completely wiped out the background but you can isolate your subject and you can really use the atmosphere in the air to your advantage. Now, whenever I come to the Malvern Hills, the weather always seems to tease me. The fog's lifted. It was collecting on one side of the hills for a while and we've got a big break in the sky. The problem is east is that way, west is that way and that break in the sky is to the west. But I think I might stick around just to see what happens. So we've got a slither of light coming out from here and it's going all the way down here. So it's all quite interesting. I'm wondering if the light that's hitting here will end up hitting this bit here, whether that cloud will lift. Although I'm not sure if it's going to. There's so much atmosphere in the air. But the hardest thing is capturing that. <sighs> what to do? So can't resist it. I'm gonna break out the RX-10. I was gonna try and just use the A6600 with a kit lens, but I've failed on my task. The light and everything around me is looking too atmospheric not to take advantage of it. But it's looking so moody and so dramatic at the moment that I need to get some shots of this. The thing is, it's really hard to capture this and get it into your camera. One thing I find with the RX is you can pick out different parts of the landscape. So this housing estate, the light is catching it and it's such a low angle it actually looks quite interesting. It's not a world-class shot, but I find things like this absolutely fascinating. When you get these really unique shapes of light underneath clouds, it just all looks pretty cool. Now, it's a shame there's not one building on its own because that would look really cool. So there's still too much haze in the atmosphere really to utilize a really long lens. Don't think I'm gonna get any light on the side of the hill it's all staying down in the flats. Hmm, what to do? Let's see what's happening on the other side. Ah, oh, you're joking. <laughs> There's sunlight hitting the land on one side. There's sunlight hitting the land on the other side. And this cloud is just forming over these hills. It's hard to grab any of the features. I mean, the top of the beacon is completely covered in cloud. The sun almost poked through, but didn't quite. And what I'm gonna call it the electrocution tree that's got some really nice backlight and that makes a nice silhouette just wondering if that sun's gonna poke out come on the really frustrating thing with days like this is not knowing what to do i might just have to break out the jelly babies and just have a bit of a sugar hit and then make a decision from there hmm. now ah, what's the sugar telling me so i've made a decision I'm gonna head over to british camp which is the other end of the mulvans and see what photos i can get from there so that's what i'm gonna do Whenever I walk anywhere, I'm looking for different things that will make interesting subjects or interesting photographs. Some of them work, some of them don't. If I get a good photo, that's fantastic. And if I don't, I don't really care because I'm getting more time behind that camera. That's 
people will like it. Oh, fantastic. Probably should have come here instead of Perseverance Hill. But hey-ho, it's the luck of the draw. So I'm going to use the 15 millimeter. I'm going to get this windy path in the foreground as my leading line into the frame. This is a very obvious composition, but I might as well get it with the moody clouds over the beacons in the distance. And obviously I broke out the RX-10 as well, got a few shots with that. So the sun's popping in and out, it's producing some really nice light on this foreground. And this shows that you might have completely overcast mornings and completely fogged up starts to the day, but never give up because this is so well worth it. Ah, can't beat it. Oh yeah, and if you like the videos and you like the stuff that I'm doing, subscribe, click the like button and leave a comment below.